Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Today's video is a little bit different. We're going to do a little bit of a walk. We're going to do a bit of a chat and talk a bit, a bit of local history here and talk about this bottle. Now, this was thrown out as discarded as rubbish probably about 140 years ago, I'd reckon. We'll have a bit better look at this in a minute. But it was given to me by a local lady, uh, Bev, who found it in the side of our lake. Now, it's got some interesting history, and we'll go for a walk around and see if we can find the spot where she found it, because she actually drew me a mud map. And we'll go and have a look, see if we can find any more other bits there. But this one is complete. It's been rolling around in the water for a long, long time, and I have a suspicion I know where it came from. So we'll have a bit better look at the bottle now, and then we'll go for a walk. Okay, let's have a better look at this bottle. Now, Bev found it on the edge of the lake in the mud, and it was full of mud as well. And I'm not sure if she knew I collected bottles or just because I have the antique shop in town that she thought she'd drop it into me. She didn't want anything for it. She was just happy that it wasn't left in the lake as rubbish. And that's what it was in the early days. There was no glass bottle recycling schemes. This is around about 1890s. And generally, if bottles weren't reused because they were useful, they were pretty much just thrown away. And a lot of them ended up in lakes and waterways and a lot were buried. Now, if you look at the sandblasting effect around the top on this and around the high point on the shoulder, you can see that it's been rolling around in the silt in the lake for a long, long time. I would suggest it was probably thrown out in the 1890s. Um, of course, there's a chance that kids could have found it in more recent times and lobbed it into the lake, but that marking there from rolling around in the sand tells me it has been in the in the water for a long, long time. So it's an 1890s bottle. It's a wine bottle. It's got a fairly deep kick up. There's a bit of wear to the base, but not a great deal. But it was probably hasn't actually sat on a flat surface for a long time. It spent most of its time on the side. There are some bubbles in the glass, and I think if we can turn it round, it's a beautiful green. I thought there was some bubbles here. There you go. There's a big elongated bubble in there, typical of manufacturer from those days. Um, it's probably been in what they call a turn mold, which wipes the seams off. Some of these actually have a three-piece mold seam where it has a, a seam around the neck and then one up each side to the top, and then the top was hand applied. I've done a series on antique bottles. If you want to know more about them, I'll put a link for the playlist up now. But anyway, it's a beautiful old bottle, lots of character, not much value because they're reasonably common. It's probably an English-made bottle, and if I was to sell that, I'd put it in the shop for about $10. But what I'm going to do is we'll go for a walk and see if we can locate the spot where it was found. And uh, we'll take Coco for a walk. Chris and I'll come with me. And you'll get to see a little bit of our town. And I'll, if I can remember some of the history, I'll tell you. And we will probably then donate this bottle to the local museum. Okay, guys, we're off for a walk down the street. Chris Dan's with me. She's carrying her custom-made uh, <laughs> floor uh, uh, bottle retrieval tool in case there's some in the lake otherwise known as a garden hoe. Coco's with us down here. We're going to go for a walk up the street. We'll show you the sights of the town and the lake. It's not just up the street. Up the street and around the corner. <laughs> All right, here's our main street. Oh. We won't go up the shopping centre part. We'll cross over into the middle. It's a really wide street okay. with a, a nice area in the middle where they hold markets sometimes. Uh, excuse me while I swing the camera around to make sure I'm not going to be run over. And... Uh, we just have to go up here a little bit across the other side and the lake's pretty well right on the edge of the main street. There's some new developments along the edge of the lake here. At one stage in the early days, there used to be shops right along this street and the backs of the shops. Yeah, Christian used to have a shop here before it was redeveloped and it's now become a distillery, brewery and distillery. Uh, they rebuilt this old building. It's uh, the original first police court and camp circa 1870s, earliest days of the town, and they actually demolished this building and rebuilt it because it wasn't stable. Uh, there's a bistro and a lovely area out the back. You can see the lake through there. Our town really is blessed to have such a nice lake here. Uh, these are all new buildings as well. But in the early days, there used to be shops right along here, and of course, they never valued tourism like they do now, and the back door of the shops was basically just the lake. Uh, and there was a wharf here originally where they used to unload 
I think mainly firewood. So there's the lake, beautiful area. We're up quite high now, really. And there used to be a church just here. There did used to be a church until the truck went through it. If I can find a photo, I'll put it up <laughs> on the video now. It must have been, oh, how long ago? 10 years, 15 years ago? Yeah, between 10 and 15, yeah. Just yeah. past that big tree there. That's right. And uh, a truck went right through the church. He was lucky he didn't end up in the lake. Such a beautiful day out today. Uh, it's all nicely grassed here. And we're just going to go down this path, which just dog legs down here and ends up on a boardwalk, which goes right around the edge of this part of the lake. Now, this lake was actually the Goulburn River. It was uh, back in the first days of Ngambi, it was basically a lagoon and probably hundreds, maybe thousands of years ago, this horseshoe area was probably the main course of the river. But it became a lagoon and way out on those far on the horizon there where you can see the trees is now the course of the river. Uh, and before the weir was built about 10 k's out the road, this area was pretty well just swampland. And of course the weir built the level up and it's created the lake as we see it today. So I've come to the end of the boardwalk, so you can see the, the sort of horse-shaped area of the lake that goes up to the main street. There's some really nice houses over the other side there, all with fabulous water views and property prices here have gone berserk. Out in the middle there, I don't know if you can see on camera, but it's very shallow out there because originally that was just pretty well swampland. And there's actually the remains of two old barges, which were original... Uh, paddle boats, paddle steamers on the river back in the 1800s and they became wood barges and eventually they were just sunk out in the middle of the lake area. So it would be quite deep around the edge of this horseshoe area but uh, the middle is very shallow. Alright so the path leads up here a bit and across a little bit of a creek and then we get to a park area and then the track goes out to a new development where the bottle was found. Okay we'll forked a bit further looking back towards the main street now and when I first moved to town from here on was just paddocks and basically bushland and now there's a new development out here and they've continued the walk. Uh, the lake does have a rowing course on it, it's quite a uh, quite a well used rowing course, in fact I think they had the Olympic trials here one year. So it's a good lake in that it doesn't really dry up in a drought because the Goulburn River is dam dammed out at the weir, um, it always maintains a pretty healthy level here. So this track winds through what was paddocks and there used to be an old homestead out here. Now, probably around about where I'm filming now, I think I had a photo and if I can find it, I'll put it up. And there was a beautiful old homestead. It was in disrepair by the time I moved here and it had kids through it, vandalizing it. And it was basically demolished. In fact, I think the owner put a match to it and sold all the land for development. Uh, and I had dug some very old bottles in this little gully up here a long time ago and there was a well that had been filled in and no doubt it will still be under the grass and whatever's down that well will probably be there forever because I'm not allowed to be, well, I'm not likely to be allowed to be able to dig it up. So if you've seen that photo, it's rather interesting how it's all been developed now. There's a street right down the edge of the lake, the walkway continues and there's actually a beach up the other end. So we'll walk up to the beach and then we'll get out our treasure map and see if we can find where this bottle was. All right, we've got further around the track now. We've just kind of gone around a corner from the main part. This is the rowing course back here and the caravan parks over there, which is quite a big complex. It actually, when it's full, I think holds more people than what the population of the town is. This area here uh, is all really developed well. There's lots of two-story houses going up. Um, it's a really, really big growth area and of course it's on the water and it's only an hour north of Melbourne so it was always going to be developed. Down over that part there just behind that big tree is the beach so we'll take Coco for a swim and then we'll get out our treasure map and follow that. And this is Coco's favourite spot of the town I think and it looks like she's a bit warm after our walk. Aren't you going to splash around Coco? <laughs> Alright, that's not very exciting. <laughs> Usually a lot more boisterous. <laughs> so they trucked all this sand in and they made a really nice beach and it's been here, how long has it been here? About three, four years? Uh, yeah, about longer, maybe. Come on. Come on. So it's a great area to swim, it's quite shallow and there's nothing better to, than swimming in fresh water rather than in chlorinated water and the dog absolutely loves it. Come 
So while Coco's finishing off her swimming exercises, let's have a look at the map. Now, Bev's mud map shows Allura, which is this development. Oh, sorry, we'll get it in the shadows. The beach, which we're at now. Then there's a huge gum tree, which would be that one. And then we've got some reeds and the boardwalk, which we walked across before. And some more reeds. And then the path continues over here. We're under the grass. Low water level was when she found it. I'm not sure. I think the lake's up a bit now. Green bottle in mud. Old posts in water we have to look for. So once we get past the boardwalk and the reeds, we'll follow the edge of the lake and look for the old posts in the water. Past the big gum tree, over the boardwalk, which looks like it's a bit of a natural creek, but it's dry at the moment. There's reeds ahead, and we'll follow the grass out to the left. Watch out, Coco. Okay, Coco spotted some ducks. Okay, here's some old posts in the lake. Now, there's been a bit of erosion here. It's been washing away a bit. And it looks like Coco has gone in again. Um, now, as there's rocks underneath the water I can see. So I'd suggest we're probably not going to find anything else here. But these old posts could have been a really early jetty or perhaps even just a bit of a... I'm not sure. Could have been sides of a, a ramp for a boat. Uh, they're certainly not trees that's been purposely put in here. And the water's really washed. I'll see if I can not fall in. The water's really washed up under this into this clay here. So perhaps that has dislodged a bottle that, that Bev found. And there may be more. But I certainly can't see any signs of rubbish. Um, oh, it's washed away a lot over there, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. So... The lake's probably back up to its normal level, so when it's low it might be worth coming and having a scratch here. But I was saying earlier that I think I know the history of this bottle in that this land here, the homestead I showed you a picture of before, which is just over that hill, or it was, and all this area was, I believe, a very early vineyard in the area, around about 1870s to 1880s. Uh, and then this lake didn't fill up until about 1890. So this would have been all just low-lying swampland. And I reckon this bottle had come from the winery that was here. I think it was called Goulburn Valley... You got a bit of a bottle there? Yeah. It's Goulburn Valley Vineyard Company, I think. I haven't read up on it yet, but I remember hearing that it was an early winery here. And that glass doesn't look anywhere near as old. But it's been there a while. Let's have a look at that. It's certainly not as old as the other piece. Can you get down? Yep. Oh, look at that. That's a 1960s Cons. Uh, it's in fluid ounces, so yeah, it's pre-1974. Cons soft drink, uh, Bendigo and Swan Hill, so a local soft drink. That's been here a long time, but yeah, won't leave it there. Good idea. So, look, there's some holes in here. There's probably yabbies in here. But there doesn't seem to be any other sign of rubbish. But if the lake's low again, I might come back down here and have a look. But I think that wine bottle that we've seen has actually come from the early Goulburn Valley Vineyard Company that established themselves here pre-1900 on this very spot. And given that we've pretty well established the bottle has been in the water for a long, long time, I would suggest it directly late, relates to the the winery business or the vineyard business that was here. So I'm going to give it to the museum. I think they're open tomorrow. And we'll tag it as in its date and where it was found. And it's something that's a tangible link to Nagambi's history, which I think is great. This place has sure changed a lot since it was vineyards back in the 1880s, 1890s. All right, that'll do for now. We'll take Coco home. There's a jet ski out on the lake. You can probably hear it. Sometimes at night, it sounds like there's a massive swarm of giant mosquitoes. Anyway, there's our lake. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll, um, I might film when I take this bottle to the museum tomorrow. And here we are at the Ngambi Historical Society Museum, which is in the old Shire Offices building, established 1871, magnificent old building. So we'll take our bottle in, probably won't be able to film in there, and we'll donate it.
Oh look, they've got some other bottles in here. Very nice, there goes the alarm. I better stop filming and I'll go and talk to someone. Well that was fun, they were most interested in the bottle and most grateful and really appreciated Nagambi's history, which is what a museum should be all about. Um, so they jotted down the details and uh, they didn't, I didn't ask if I could film in there, they were mostly older people and in fact one of the guys said I spotted you yesterday walking down by the lake with a hoe thing and he said I wondered what you were up to so um, you can't do much in a small town without being noticed. Anyway thanks for watching guys, um, I'm happy to have saved that bottle, well thanks to Bev, uh, it's kind of kind of reverse recycling we didn't save it from going to landfill we kind of rescued it from landfill uh, it'll go in a cabinet at the museum uh, for future generations to admire so there we go another video finished thanks guys we'll see you in the next one